it took a lot of negotiating and time and permissions and nothing moves fast so it, it was it was quite a challenge but it was it was fantastic uh, to have that opportunity I needed a drone, I think, because I wanted to have two cameras in the house. The benign one is a dispassionate camera that just watches the drone do its stuff. A kind of malevolent one, which is the drone, which is a more you know, free radical that is swooping around and hunting or surveilling. The film is called Left, Right and Centre and it's basically filmed at night at the beginning and it's stacks of newspapers on this desk, all the newspapers from the election period and beyond, so about five months worth of newspapers. All these newspapers have been read here in the Houses of Parliament, they're the ones they subscribe to. I put all the right-wing newspapers on the right side and all the left-wings on the left. The drone disrupts all the papers and blows them all over the house, creating this terrible mess left and right newspapers all get mingled together and they they form this kind of bombardment of visual bombardment of news headlines and some trivial some meaningful a lot of your finished pieces concern the printed media the press but there's a view that they're rather on the way out now yeah, but the fourth estate's not going away. People read the newspapers online, that's all. Uh, the physical object, I like the cliché of the, the, the newspaper. Is that what it's become now? I think it has, and I think it's... I mean, I love all those things in films where you see the newspaper spinning around and, you know, on the news you're always having the factory where they're printing them. Um, so I quite like the cliché value of that. Perhaps if newspapers have gone in ten years, it will be a snapshot of a time. But they haven't gone away, you know. You get, get off the tube at the end of the day and it's covered in evening standards. So I like that when you see the tube all covered in evening standards. It's somehow people have digested something and then they moved on. Let's talk about the Instagram feed. Yeah, I, I, you know, it was left completely up to me what I wanted to deliver as an election artist's work. And I found it very hard just to boil it all down to one piece. I'd never done social media before. I, again, really enjoyed that because that was just like my sketchbook. I, talk photo I take photographs all the time. So for me, it was very natural just to, to, to be recording all these little snippets. And then I, I started to use more and more video just because I thought, well... This, this action's happening and the photograph's not going to do it. Strong and stable leadership with me in the national interest. And then I thought, well, how can I crystallise all these Instagram, all this period of time? So that's when this animation that I've made, which is about three minutes long, called Election Abstract, which is basically all my videos and, and images from the Instagram condensed into this flyby um, of the election and the aftermath. Do you think that rapid um, sort of superfluity of images is what the voter experienced? I or think do you there was so much happening, especially the terrorist attacks in Manchester and London Bridge, um, Finsbury Park Mosque, um, the Westminster attack that just happened more or less at the same time as I was being appointed, um, and then the Grenfell Tower. Those things played into the politics, whether you liked it or not. All, the, politi your, all, all the politicians I saw out on the, on the stump and um, you know at various demos and things, they, they seemed very obviously engaged with the public and were there, you know, uh, amongst the public. And the, the ones I've met seem to be, you know, great. I mean, I'm from all parties, they were all, had their own passions and beliefs and they were talking to the crowds about that. So, yeah, that was great. I think individual MPs are doing a, a you know, very lowly paid for a pretty, pretty great job. Most of that was quite positive. But meanwhile, I'd be walking to the, to the tube or I'd get off a train in, in Scotland, for example, and I just couldn't stop photographing homeless people, for example. It just seems like there's a statistic there's 15% more homeless people on the street over the last year. I kind of got bound up with those kind of issues by the end. The general public sort of took over. I'm curious to know whether at the end of this you felt more sort of optimistic positive about politicians, the press, the democratic process, or you thought, yes, we really are going to the dogs? I think I felt we were going to the dogs. 
Uh, I you really, did think yeah, that? Yeah, I really did think at the end, after all the arguments and all the discussions on, and the su surprise of the election, that, that then afterwards that would change something, you know, that there would be some, that would be reflected in things going forward. I mean, I think the election got hijacked by Brexit and people were really confused about which party to vote for and on that. Um, and I think that the, the, the hung parliament just reflected the ambivalence of, of the public. And yet everything sort of, seemed to judder on without, as if this election hadn't happened. So that was a kind of curious thing. I was quite surprised by that. Shall we do something that doesn't happen here very often? Just oh. shake hands. Thank yes. you very much. <laughs> Great seeing you again. Yeah.